Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we take a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, obsolete, or all three. And uh, well, today we've got something interesting. In fact, it's the biggest piece of oddware that I've had so far. This is the Philips Virtual Pinball Set. What have I gotten myself into? Now, if you've watched Oddware before, you may recall that I covered this in the past, the Thrustmaster Wizard pinball controller. And this was just, uh, this is a far smaller device that does a very similar thing to the Philips Virtual Pinball Controller. And this was just a little dealio that clipped onto the side of your keyboard or just really anything that you could uh, stick it to or even just thrust it around in the air like a master. Check out my full Oddware video for coverage of that thing. But uh, yes, this is not what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about this monster, the Philips Virtual Pinball Controller. And yes, this is the same Philips brand that you might be familiar with for like, you know, electric shavers and <laughs> whatever else. But they also made gaming stuff, of course, most notably the Philips CDI. And they did a whole lot of things for computers during the uh, early to late 90s and then just sort of dropped off the map as far as that kind of stuff goes. Obviously, they're still around today, but they're no longer making niche devices like this. And this is about as niche of a device as you can imagine. I mean, it really is made just for pinball games, much like the Thrustmaster Wizard. But this one was uh, more expensive and more involved. In fact, as far as I can tell, it retailed for about $100 back when it launched, which was in late 1996, early 1997, depending on your location. And this was mostly meant for the European marketplace. And of course, Philips being a Dutch company, that only makes sense. It did see some limited release here in the US. In fact, this one I found from a guy in California. But these are actually very hard to find, especially in the box. In fact, this is the only one that I had ever seen show up on eBay, so I was willing to pay about 50 bucks for it, but uh, I've seen them actually go for much more. But there are also far, far better things on the market nowadays. The actual device itself is pretty straightforward. You know, you got this really neat looking virtual pinball logo on there. I, I actually quite like that logo. Um, you have a plunger right here, which is really just a little micro switch inside. In fact, everything in here is all micro switches. Insanely cheap and flimsy feeling. You have one uh, flipper on the right here and a flipper on the left. However, what this has going for it that the wizard did not is everything else. Uh, you do have this little plunger here, even though it's super basic and barely qualifies. You also have all of these connectors here, which this actually acts as a keyboard controller. So it's got a microchip inside that uh, has six different keyboard keys. And so you have right here a basic AT connection and it came with a converter to allow you to plug it into PS2 compatible keyboard ports. And then you can plug your normal keyboard right into here or your abnormal keyboard. Frick, I should, I should like plug in one of my uh, really odd like big keys keyboards into that for no good reason or something <laughs> oh yeah and on the back here you also have a set of uh, switches and these little dip switch things here allow you to change the button configuration and if you can't change the key bindings in your pinball game then you can do it right here through the hardware there is no actual software that comes with this at least that is uh proprietary for this device. It just runs. Yeah, beyond that, the sheer girth of this thing is really just impressive because, yeah, this right here is set to mount onto a desktop. I mean, you know, you're gonna want a wooden desk. Like this flimsy table that I have it on right here, this is awful for it because, you know, this actually supports tilting and nudging and all that stuff. It's got little sensors inside that uh, allow it to do that. So you can uh, tilt left, right, and forward. And those again are all key combos that it puts out, or well, you know, uh, key presses out through the PS2 connector in the back there. Now, as you might've seen on the box itself, it was supposed to come with a copy of Absolute Pinball. Unfortunately, this one here did not come with that game. So I don't have the original disc to show, but what I do have to show is uh, also non-original. <laughs> That's the manual. Um, it just, 
I, I didn't have everything, so I made a really crappily copied uh, manual from a random PDF I found online. And really, this just shows how to, uh, you know, hook it up and everything. This right here, this is the dip switch table, and this is probably the most useful thing out of the entire manual, because the rest of this just like, well, you know how to play pinball? You press these buttons. See, other than the dip switch table, the manual is pretty useless and boring. However, this is not. This is probably the next coolest thing in there, other than the uh, piece of hardware itself. This is the original invoice from the guy in California that bought it back in the day. And you can see he bought it on November 8th, 1996, for a nice round price of $100. And it, apparently this one was made in Italy. And it was bought directly from Philips in the Netherlands, and they, they shipped it over there. So again, I have no idea if this was actually sold in U.S. stores or not. But uh, yeah, this invoice, I mean, this guy wanted his virtual pinball so badly, he had it imported, I suppose. Uh, really cool. If anybody actually did buy one of these in a U.S. store at retail or anything like that, then let me know. Um, but yeah, this this is the only price that I've or the only place that I've ever actually seen the price listed too. There's surprisingly little information on this piece of oddware, which is one thing that makes it so odd to me. We've taken a look at some of this crap, so let's take a look at how it actually plays and runs on an actual PC. Thanks to the magic of the internet, I was able to source a backup copy of Absolute Pinball. So uh, let's go ahead and turn that down. Right. So this is the game that it was meant to be played with, or at least that it came packed with. Uh, so, in theory, this should be the best possible experience with the Philips Virtual Pinball setup. Uh, I guess we'll see. Alright, I figured that would do it, since this is by default mapped to Enter. So we should... Don't tell me this is one of those you have to do... <laughs> yeah, so you have to actually start the game with F1, which isn't mapped to anything on the on there, so you actually do still need a keyboard. <clears throat> that kind of makes sense. Okay, now the music is really quiet. Alright, let's try this thing out. <laughs> okay, well... What do you know? These flippers actually feel really good. This whole thing is, um... It's not mounted to my desk or anything, but it feels very solid. And I'm not familiar with this pinball game. Let's, let's launch the ball again here, because I want to have that kind of feeling. This thing feels so cheap normally that it's kind of interesting that it actually doesn't feel too bad in use. Like, seriously, it just wobbles around in there, but... That feels good. Kind of cheap still, but you know, better than, uh, <laughs> obviously better than the Thrustmaster Wizard as far as not having anything. This would probably feel really good if I were standing up, actually. Okay, so here's something kind of interesting. Uh, it doesn't actually seem to want to tilt. Like I'm banging on it every which way. And if you remember the wizard controller, it was like, I could do this and it would be tilting like crazy. Well, it doesn't seem to be motion sensitive at all. <laughs> and, uh, well, I said everything was micro switches earlier, and well, it really is. So, here's how you tilt things um, basically, what you do is uh, right there, you can see it tilting forward and then tilting left and tilting right. You have to be standing up on this thing like an actual pinball table. And like, there's micro switches in there that actually flip around and uh, switch. <laughs> yeah, let me get out of here. All right, one more pinball game I want to try out because it's just my favorite of the old school PC style pinball games. And that would be Epic's Epic Pinball. And uh, let's, I've actually switched the uh, switches back there in the back to make sure that it runs with the correct key inputs coming out of here. And uh, yeah, let's just do Android because that's a freaking classic. Oh man, that feels good. <laughs> oh, I've never actually experienced that with this table before. You know, it's different. I've played this for, you know, 
endless hundreds if not thousands of hours and uh, to be able to experience this in a slightly different way with um, an actual well, an actual plunger it's actually pretty neat and again I'm very uh, satisfied with these flippers over here the buttons feel really good the micro switches are nice I'm obviously not paying attention to what I'm doing because this is a, a really sucky game going on here the tilt still doesn't seem to want to really work. Let me try to really manhandle it. Okay, see, there we go. I was able to tilt it, but I had to like just go. And now for the ultimate test of virtual pinball here. Let's, uh, let's just really try this out with something that is not meant to be played with, like Grand Theft Auto V on the PC. Yes, I'm sure this will go over just fine. Uh, we have a uh, left right here to move left. This goes right. Uh, this right here shoots. And uh, we have this right here to move forward. That's uh, insanely awkward. Oh yeah, and this, this sort of aims. Oh, it's like the hardest thing to do though. Especially aiming and moving. You can forget it, but um, <laughs> let's see what we can uh, see what we can do. Hey there, citizen. Oh no! <laughs> you are going to get killed by a pinball controller. I don't even know who I'm talking to yet, I just know somebody is. Come on. I, I don't have anything mapped to run, unfortunately, but uh, I do have what I have going on here. Oh, this is great. This is obviously how Rockstar meant the game to be played. Come on, cops. Oh, if I could just turn around. There we go. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that worked surprisingly well. Gotta aim. Oh. That went about like how I thought it would. Terribly. Well, that is all for this episode of Oddware, and I hope you enjoyed. And if you saw anything here that you liked, then perhaps you'd like to check out some of my other episodes on the Thrustmaster Wizard pinball controller, as well as whatever other thing I happen to put here. I don't normally choose until the last second. But yeah, these are interesting, I promise, according to my own totally unbiased opinion. And if you would like to do even more relating to this kind of stuff, then why not follow me on Twitter or Facebook to talk about interesting stuff throughout the week. And you can also support the show on Patreon to do even more if you really like what you see. And as always, thank you very much for watching.